In the middle of an East Coast heat wave, we've got hot playoff races as the USL Pro Game of the Week stops in Rochester, New York, and the Rhinos host the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Rochester's been leading the National Division for more than a month, but they're in a dogfight now with Harrisburg, and a six-game unbeaten run by the Hounds has them back in the hunt. In the American Division leading Orlando's off from league play this weekend, but they could clinch a playoff spot if results go their way tonight and tomorrow. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Salem Stadium. I'm Ken Tomas. He's Keith Tabesnik. And, Coach, the pressure is really on both of these clubs with just three weeks left in the season. No, absolutely. We see that Rochester sitting at the top. And, in fact, with Rochester wins tonight, they'll be the first team to clinch a playoff spot with the USL. Rochester at home has only lost one time. That's going to present a problem for Pittsburgh because they've only won once on the road. However, you talk about the heat wave. Well, it may be because of Pittsburgh Riverhounds. They have been hot as of late. As you said, no losses in the last six games. But here's the thing. They turned things around partway through the season by really getting better defense and being stingy. Talking stingy defense, you're talking about Rochester. They only let up four goals during this homestand here. Both teams, however, can have players that can break it open. They do, and Rochester's midfield maestro is number 21, Tony Donatelli. He scored at Orlando last week. He creates things for himself and for his teammates. A very solid player out of the midfield for Bob Lilly. For Pittsburgh. Former Penn State star Jason Yisley is in form, scored his team-leading fifth goal in a midweek win over Dayton. Those are just two players to watch tonight. The other 20 and the first kick or next. Tis the season, the USL Pro season. This is the game of the week. It's coming up next on Fox Soccer. The legendary New York Cosmos are back. And to mark the club's rebirth, Umbro has applied its celebrated football tailoring ethos to the brand new 2011 collection. Anthem jacket, Cosmos tees, New York Cosmos jersey, 1976-1977 home jersey. For the complete New York Cosmos line, go to soccer.com slash Umbro. is on Fox Soccer. The Breakers look to stay hot against the Flash. Live Sunday, presented by Puma. The CONCACAF Champions League. MLS teams battle the top clubs from their own backyard. All fighting for their chance to raise the cup as champions. The CONCACAF Champions League on Fox Soccer. This summer, exclusive international rivalries are on Fox Soccer. Chelsea take on the best in Asia. The BPL compete against Hong Kong's first division. Man City and Inter square off in the Dublin Super Cup. Top BPL teams take on the MLS. World's most prestigious clubs are in the Audi Cup. Don't miss any of the action this summer only on Fox Soccer. This program is brought to you by WorldSoccerShop.com. Follow World Soccer Shop on Twitter for special offers, coupons, product launches, and more. At WorldSoccerShop.com, you'll find the world's largest selection of officially licensed merchandise for Copa America 2011 this summer. You can save on gear for South America's top soccer powerhouses. And for a limited time only, get free shipping on all orders. Enter coupon code 7 Copa FS at checkout. Log on and save on your official Copa America gear today. WorldSoccerShop.com. Powered by passion. Also get a free flight. You know that comes with a private island. Really? No, it comes with a hat. See, airline credit cards promise flights for 25,000 miles, but... There's never any seat for 25,000 miles. Frustrating, isn't it? But that won't happen with the Capital One Venture Card. You can book any airline, anytime. Hey, I just said that. After all, isn't traveling hard enough? Ow. To get the flight you want, sign up for a venture card at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Uh, it's okay. I've played a pilot before. This broadcast of USL Pro is brought to you by 
uslsoccer.com. Scores, stats, news, and more exclusively on uslsoccer.com, the official website of United Soccer Leagues. By Umbro, true to soccer since 1924. For more information, visit umbro.com. By the PDL, the destination league for tomorrow's professional stars. Visit pdl.uslsoccer.com for expansion opportunities. And by the W League, the first and longest running national women's soccer league in North America. Learn how you can be a part of the women's game at wleague.uslsoccer.com. The CONCACAF Champions League gets going with preliminary round action Tuesday at San Francisco of Panama against the Seattle Sounders. Thursday, Alianza of El Salvador against FC Dallas. Both matches are live here on Fox Soccer. Here, Rochester's Bob Lilly goes for career win number 200 without some key players. So TJ Gore and Connor Tobin get deputized at the back, while Justin Evans of Pittsburgh goes with the same team that beat Dayton 3-1 to one on Wednesday. Captain Louis Rocco is a key man at the back as well as Nicola Katic, a veteran of the wars in Pittsburgh. We told you about Jason Yisley. Jeremy Dayton also an outstanding player up front for the Riverhounds who are unbeaten in their last six matches. There is Bob Lilly, who wasn't even aware, he said, of, that he was sitting on 199 career coaching wins until someone brought it up to him today. The Rhinos in black and white will kick off and they'll attack from left to right here against the all blue clad Pittsburgh Riverhounds in a key national division battle here on the USL Pro Game of the Week. Live from Rochester, New York, Ken Tomash and Keith Tabatsnik with you. And he's knocked along by TJ Gore getting a rare start tonight because Quavis Kirk, who normally would be at that right back position, has an ankle problem and their captain, Troy Roberts, is also out with a knee injury. And lastly, Alfonso Matagalvan, who gets things going in their midfield, is out. So it's a bit of a makeshift lineup for Bob Lilly tonight. Yeah, in fact, those are three tough players to lose all at once. You lose one of them here and there, and you can uh, cover for it. It's probably the first time uh, this year that Tobin and Bellamy have been together in the center back. They both started and played games there, but with other players. Here's Thomas Gray on that right wing, racing to try to get there, and does win the first corner for the Riverhounds. So a set piece opportunity early, and when you're on the road, you like to get those set pieces. Coach. I tell you, you love those set pieces, especially when you have uh, Jeremy Dade and Jason Geisley uh, in the box to get in the end. Gray, it's this one, and it's headed away by Rich Costanzo. Referee Steve Montanino apparently saw a foul in the box. And therefore, it will go back the other way with a free kick. This portion of the match is brought to you by uslsoccer.com. Scores, stats, news, and more exclusively on uslsoccer.com, the official website of United Soccer Leagues. Neil Kitson, who took over for the retired Scott Vallow and has been outstanding in the nets for the Rhinos, will put this ball back in play. Everyone over on the left side of the field. It's Gray trying to keep it in on that far side and does, and Dayton cannot keep it in. It'll go out. It'll be a throw in. Rochester on the far side. So Costanzo, Tobin, Bellamy, and Gore at the back. Costanzo and Bellamy started last week's match in Orlando. You, know, you see those four at the back, and there's always going to be one of the center midfielders right in front of that back, almost a back five defensively. You see Matt Tuttle, Shintaro Harada. Defender of the year in the league last year. Now playing in a central midfield role. Splitting the middle there with Sammy Appiah. And in fact, that partnership in the midfield has been one of the big reasons that Pittsburgh's been able to turn things around. Uh, getting those guys to understand their roles and to play together. They're both very good players. I've uh, seen Appiah play with uh, Boston University for Neil Roberts uh, a number of times. And Shintaro, seen though he played for Crystal Palace uh, in the time period that I was here. Outstanding player. The elder statesman of the Riverhounds at age 30, <laughs> Japanese international. This is a very young team, and Justin Evans said to us this morning, I mean, we've, this is the way this league is. A lot of young players, a lot of dynamic talent, young guys, and a lot of guys, 12 of the 22 starters, played their ball in the PDL coming up, so. No, they, they absolutely did, and I'll tell you what, I watched a PDL game uh, just this last Saturday, went down to watch Reading United AC play uh, South Jersey, and uh, very impressed. It was great to see some of these college players I've seen over the last couple of years, and. I'll tell you what, for the college coaches, what a bonus to have the have PDL around now and such a good level. 
You see guys make their way up to the pros, like Tyler Rosenlund, who is here with the ball and swinging it to the other side. J.C. Banks, can he get a foot on this one? Good work by the Pittsburgh defense. Ball loose in the box, and Hunter Gilstrap gets to it. His first touch on the ball comes in the fourth minute. Well, that's another look at this coming in as Banks tries to get by a sliding tackle there and, you know almost got away from him uh, you know would have almost got a chance there but uh, no harm done Nikola Kadic big center back there and here is Harada being spun to the turf by Isaac Kissy Kissy getting a start tonight he worked his way back from a knee injury that cost him the first half of the season I see the foul coming in uh, on uh, Shintaro drawing the foul, holding the ball, trying to turn, but hard to turn with the guys going through you like that. Gray will take a lot of their free kicks. And he's ready. He'll send this one right towards Kitts, and it's over his head, and he just barely taps it over the bar for a corner. I tell you, Ken, it didn't look like there was much danger to it at all, but it was just hit that perfect spot where the keeper had to be sure that it was going to go over. You see he's coming in, and... Kitson watching it right the way through, and you know, he couldn't take any chances there. Might have come off the crossbar. Gray has four assists on the season, and he nearly got his first goal there, but Kitson able to put it over the bar. We're going to make him take the corner from the other side, second of the evening for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. We told you just one seven and two away from home, and that one was at Charleston, which is not an easy place to win. So. They're optimistic coming in tonight as Gray puts his foot to this corner kick in a scoreless match, and it's headed over the bar and out for a gold kick. Keith, uh, both of these teams are part of a core group of six teams in USL Pro that have been at this for more than a decade, further emphasizing USL Pro's the strongest, most sophisticated, and most experienced North Americans men's professional soccer league below MLS, both on and off the field, as you see that corner go around. Yeah, you see Rochester uh, you know, dodge that corner kick, and Rochester, obviously, one of the top professional franchises uh, you know around certainly the top one in USL history and a lot of credit to the Rochester Rhino owner Rob Clark and the GM Pat or Coley it's a team every year all 15 years have been in postseason in the playoffs and if we can get three points tonight they will clinch that 16th playoff spot but here as we hit six minutes played we are scoreless between the Rhinos and the Riverhounds Sterling Flunder will take the throw here that goes out off Tony Donatelli's head, so the Riverhounds pick up a little real estate. Flunder plays it forward. Gives it right away to Isaac Kissy. He's got some speed to burn. Toe pokes this one forward to Hamilton. Another speedster up front. Well done by the Hounds to break that play up. Now it's Jason Nisley with it. Sammy Appia. One of the back line to Nikola Kadic. We see the Rhinos forwards putting some pressure on that back line. They know that early in the season, in the, including the last time that these two teams played, a 3-0 win by Rochester, the, the Hounds were a little careless with the ball at the back, and it hurt them. Careless with the ball at the back, and also uh, maybe not coming out of the gate so uh, very fast when the, when the game started as well. And certainly you're playing at home. And you know, the thing with Rochester, well, they've been playing well. They, they have lost two of the last three, of course, both to Orlando City Islanders, the top team in USL right now. Uh, having said that, they felt they played quite well. Well, we told you, Pittsburgh, I mean, they're trying to make the playoffs for the second straight year, something they've never done. And Riverhouse president David Wilkies built a real good organization there with some good people focusing on developing youth. Great camp program, youth programs. And Justin Evans, just 34 years old, he does look like he could still play, but he said, you know what, I really couldn't. So he didn't think about coaching, but here it is. And he has his team in the thick of the playoff hunt with three weeks to go. Yeah, he does. He's, he's going to be a, a really good coach, and he's got the right mentality. We had a great chat with him today, you know, and just his, his outlook on things is very good, very mature. And, you know, he's a very good player, obviously knows the league extremely well. And, look, he made the adjustments partway through the season. It's turned things around for them. Here's Hamilton now. Closed down there by Kadich. Plays it off to Banks. Banks will have a shot, and Gilstrap makes the save. Adding to his league leading total, Gilstrap leads the league in saves now with 82 as Banks finally gets the first shot for against Justin Evans' team. I see Banks coming in and uh, having a pretty clear shot. Defender did not get on the shooting foot quick enough, but obviously that shot was not going to really test Gilstrap. Eight shutouts on the year. Maybe one of the easier ones of his 82 saves. 
But there will be more tonight because here comes Donatelli playing this on to the right wing where TJ Gore has it, played into the box. Kissy gets a foot on it and puts it out into the parking lot almost. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Kissy wanted to have a uh, highlight goal there, but he really did a great job to flick it on. Probably should have put that ball across the middle. We have a look at it again. It comes and watch, you know, it's a nice, clever touch, exactly what he wanted, but. You know, at that point, either change your mind or put it across the middle and hope something happens, but uh, it's going to be a very tough goal to score. Louis Rocco, that after. and Sorry. Rocco was right there. Yeah. And Justin Evans told us that's what Rocco gives him at the back is uh, terrific organization back there as Jason Yisley goes down, courtesy of Tyler Bellamy, who's fortunate, I think, not to go in Steve Montanino's book. I think he's very fortunate. He had some words from uh, the referee on that. And, you know, he certainly came up and uh, made a statement to Yisley that he's going to be around him all game. Have a look at this again. And, uh, he just comes right right into the back of him. Uh, I don't know what he's really complaining about because that is a foul. Gray's last free kick nearly scored. This one is grabbed at the six by Neil Kitson. So they're going to have to keep an eye there on Mr. Gray and those long free kicks that yeah, he's, he's expertly put them into the box twice now. We've played 10 minutes. He's put them in there, and, uh, you know, that one was a little more routine for Kitson. The other one, obviously, a real tester. But Kitson uh, is not going to have too much trouble with those. Uh, outstanding goalkeeper at St. John's University with uh, Dr. Dave Mazur's group. And in fact, he had the lowest goals against average in the NCAAs in 2008, and St. John's great run that year. Well, Bob Lilly. Actually, Lily and Evans, both of these teams were disappointed not to continue their run in the U.S. Open Cup. Of course, the Richmond Kickers still alive, beat Sporting Kansas City in the quarters a couple weeks ago, and they're going to go play the Chicago Fire next month in the semifinals, so they're really carrying the flag for USL Pro in the Open Cup. Yeah, they are. In fact, they're the first teams in the USL since Rochester in 2009 to reach the Open Cup semifinals. And actually, if they defeat the Fire, they'd be the first side since the Charleston Battery in 2008 to reach the Open Cup final. And of course, the Rhinos remain the last USL side to win the Open Cup in 1999. Yeah, 12 years ago, they did it at Columbus Crew Stadium, and this beautiful stadium here has been built since then. Just over five years old as the Rhinos try to do something for this crowd. Isaac Kissy waits, now flicks it back again at the edge of the box. Donatelli now. Swerving ball to the far post, and Gray lets that one just ride out of play. Gray was in the middle of what he was going to do there, but uh, that before actually might have been one for Kissy to try a volley. This portion of the match is brought to you by Umbro, true to soccer since 1924. For more information, visit umbro.com. We're at Salem Stadium in Rochester, New York for the USL Pro Game of the Week. Ken Tomash, Keith Tabachnik with you. That's Hunter Gilstrap. Sends his goal kick across midfield. Dukoski got a head on that one, but Sammy Appia got a foot to it. And there's TJ Gore sending it high in the air. Kissy, who's been active here in the early going with a couple of chances, but Dukoski comes up with that one. Kissy's been very active. It seems all the balls have been in the air with him, though. He hasn't got it on the ground yet. Forward to Jeremy Dayton. Shintaro Harada. Back heel, far side, Gray. That was Ben Horner, rather, the right back who had pushed up a bit. Now, Gilstrap launches one. Yisley tries to get on the end of it. Bellamy got his head to it first. Tracked down by Donatelli here on the near side for Rochester. Kissy with an ominous amount of space there in the midfield. Well, that was a careless back heel. Right, that's the type of back heel that can lead to a counterattack for the other team. Steve Montanino, you saw there, our referee has been refereeing since the age of 15. So this isn't his first rodeo. In fact, he's the only national referee from Western New York. So not a long trip for him to come to this match tonight. Bellamy to Rosenland. Here to Gore, and now the Pittsburgh forwards and wide mids put a little token pressure on, and they go back to Kitson. Now Rosenland. A little 
try Drew Cost. Cost playing against his former Penn State teammate, Jason Yisley, in this match. They were both stars under Barry Gorman there. Now Harada. Back to Gray. Now Ben Horner. And the Riverhounds will reset. Captain Louis Rolko. Closed in on the near side touchline. It's back to Gilstrap. Bellamy was looking for the offside flag, and there it is. It's the assistant referee waiting to see where the ball came down to, and you know, it was obviously pretty close, actually. It almost looked like uh, you know, he was uh, just hoping, uh, Bellamy was hoping for an offside call, but it actually was. And, uh, I'd say from the other end, uh, it was time where Pittsburgh could have kept the ball instead of uh, lumping it upfield. Into Kissy. Kissy in the box. Still alive. And now it's taken away from him. And we've got a Rochester player down, and that is Kissy. Is Kissy and yeah. that's, he's holding that right knee. You see the brace on it, and that is the knee that kept him out of play for the beginning of the season. And so they're going to call for the athletic training staff to come on and you definitely don't want to see this, especially with an exciting young player who uh, means so much to this team. He was a good goal scorer a year ago, and they were hoping for big things from him this year, but he got hurt, and now if, if he's shaken up again. And it's not only that, he, he's been the most active player in the attack for Rochester. And, you know, we catch it just as he goes, and it's caught right there. You know, whether it was his ankle or whether it turned his knee when the ankle was hit. But it is the knee they're working on. So uh, sometimes, you know, that just turns the knee the wrong way. Well, they're getting him up. And since he was tended to, they, uh, that's good to see. He is up and walking off. Well, we're here in the middle of the summer, and you know what that means. A lot of great names from the soccer world are coming to these shores, Orlando, played Bolt Wanderers last Sunday. They've got Newcastle at home tomorrow night. They expect a huge crowd. There are Jordies coming over from Newcastle for that match. And Portsmouth on Wednesday will be at Charleston to play the Battery. So it's a, a real big summer of international friendlies for USL Pro teams. Uh, no, it is. And the, the teams love coming over to the States and playing, and the crowds turn up for it. Obviously, as you said, Newcastle, they, you know, they're some of the most fanatic uh, fans in the world. But you know, it's part of the USL Pro model to bring over top international teams and form the partnerships also with the MLS teams that they have, and such as the Harris, Harrisburg City Islanders and Philadelphia Union, you know, to name uh, you know, one of the big partnerships that's going on. So Kissy has come to the near side here. It looks like he'll rejoin the fray at the next opportunity as Kolokadic, better here, Shintaro Harada. Don't talk about international flavor. Shintaro Harada, the Japanese player. Kolokadic. I'm sure uh, Shintaro's having some uh, good bragging rights uh, lately, uh, unfortunately for our U.S. women's team, but... Now here's Ben Horner. Gray, inward to. Oh, and that may result in a card. We'll see, it's definitely a talking to. Sammy Appia. Well, my guess is now each team's had their one talking to and uh, the cards will come out after that. And look at Sammy going in, a uh, little dive and gets the foot. You know, and again, uh, easily a bookable tackle. Get Seen it. Get behind. Get behind. Here through the first 17 minutes and change. Cards yet, no goals yet. A couple of shots, a couple of chances. A lot of the line for both of these teams, as we talked about. Pittsburgh hoping to maintain that place, maintain the hot streak, and maintain that place in the playoff position. And Rochester, with the hopes of having home field advantage throughout the playoffs, pretty much gone after losing twice to Orlando in the last few weeks, but they can still win the division. They can still host a couple of rounds of the playoffs. And I think with Pittsburgh, uh, you know, they've already played 20 games, and you know, they just need to grab enough points to just keep a comfortable margin uh, ahead of New York. Right now, they're level with Los Angeles on points, and New York breathing down their necks. Still a lot of soccer to be played in the last three weeks of the USL Pro season. It's Isaac Kissy, who's back in the game. Gets the ball back, heads it on here. Here's Hamilton, plays it off to Donatelli. Donatelli gets it to his left peg. A save by Hunter Gilstrap. And Kissy was right there for the rebound and couldn't put it home. Well, it was an outstanding save. Play of the game right now so far, 18 minutes in. And 
You're looking at the guy who did it, an outstanding reaction save. Look at this, good composure here for the ball being played across. And this looks like, oh, he thinks he's got it in. Defender gets in behind as well to try to save it. And you're right, look at the rebound come right out. And Kissy's almost right there, just misses it. Another one sent into the box. Costanzo got there and it's finally clear. That'll be knocked back to Bellamy. And he'll send it high in the air. Donatelli with a slip head. Rocco gets there. Tuttle with pressure from Gore. Drew Koss chests this one down. Tyler Rosenlund. Here's J.C. Banks. Will he have another go? It's broken up there. Makevich. This is what Pittsburgh needs to do right now is just string some passes together. That's four passes and then play forward, you know, and lose it. And uh, they didn't need to still. They need to uh, almost to rest themselves defensively. They've yep. got to keep the ball. They were halfway there. I think it was good right up to the point where they lost the ball. It's one of the things that happens when you've got big guys up top. Sometimes you, you, in your mind you, you, you think, oh, they're big. I'm going to knock it up there. And you do it bef when you're not really, don't need to. And, uh, you know, these players, Dayton and, and Yazi, obviously are big players. And, you know, they're, they're relying on balls in the air. Maybe they flick on or whatever. But right there, they've defended a lot so far this half. They need to keep the ball. Koss sent that one out of the far side. Throw in for the Hounds. Geisley gets chest to it. It'll bounce around over on that far side, which has been a popular route tonight. Here's Hamilton stays upright, but pushed that one too far out in front of himself. They look for Dayton again. It'll be knocked back to Neil Kitson. We hope you're enjoying the USL Pro Game of the Week. In addition to this broadcast package on Fox Soccer, you can see more than 100 games live on USLlive.com. You can also enjoy USL action uh, through our USL Breakaway magazine every month. So your fans have never been closer to the passion, excitement, and tradition that lives in USL Pro. Now in its 25th anniversary season, United Soccer League's developing the game, clubs, players, and future has never looked brighter. Maybe a goal is in our future here as Gore sends this one across. Louis Rocco is there, and again, it just avoids Hamilton, but Banks will have a go and put it over the bar. Again, nice quick half turn by Banks there for the shot. Just put, needs to put it on target, hit the top of the ball, but uh, again, you know, you, you do feel like a goal's coming for Rochester. Every time they come down, something seems to be happening, and this man uh, is going to have a long night, a lot of work, if they're going to keep uh, Pittsburgh into the game. Have a look at that again. You know, clearly, you see Banks just leaning right back in, uh, trying to hit, hit that ball as hard as he could. Banks making his 12th start. He's done well. The son of former player Jimmy Banks. Stanzo now. Costanzo, another one has a Penn State connection. He went to Penn State before transferring to Maryland and helped Maryland to a national championship. This portion of the match brought to you by the PDL, the destination league for tomorrow's professional stars. Visit pdl.uslsoccer.com for expansion opportunities. PDL season, of course, wraps up this weekend. Things are getting really exciting as we get down to the wire. Number of division and playoff races. 13 teams are already in the playoffs. But in the Heartland Division, you see Real Colorado, Thunder Bay, and Des Moines fighting it out for two berths there. Thunder Bay was in the Final Four a year ago. Vancouver, Victoria, and Abbotsford fighting out for second place in the Northwest Division. Just make sure that you're tuning into Fox Soccer on August 6th for the PDL Championship Live. These guys, of course, hope to be playing at this level. Very soon, a lot of these guys we mentioned, 12 of the 22 starters did play in the PDL. Tyler Rosenland. Here's Banks again. Banks will send this one in over the head of Hamilton. Donatelli with another chance at it. And finally, the Rhinos break through. And it's Isaac Kissy in the 23rd minute. Well, Kissy has been the most active guy in the attack all night. He's been deserving to get on the end of something. It was Donatelli who was going to set him up for it. 
Sneaks in behind the defense. A good ball across. Somewhat of an easy goal, but you got to be in the right place at the right time. And Kissy was there. Have another look at this. Ball played across by Banks. Also a guy that's been really active. And, you know, this was a case of uh, Matt Tuttle allowing Donatelli to get in behind him. And there it is, a uh, you know, somewhat easy clinical goal. A little cross and flick in for Kissy. Kissy in just his second start of the season. Breaks this game open in the 23rd minute. Donatelli with his second assist of the season. And it was Kissy's second goal of the season. A lot of seconds on that one. This is wild here in the 24th now. The USL Pro Game of the Week, and that brings this crowd alive. Now we'll see how Pittsburgh reacts. I told you they've just won one game on the road all season. Got a young team. They've got confidence after that six-game unbeaten run. It is just the one goal. Yeah, they you know, had, a, had a good midweek game uh, Wednesday night, defeating uh, Dayton three to one after Dayton scored first, and uh, they responded very well, being down one nothing on Wednesday. And of course, that is just two nights ago. So now the Rhinos with the lead and the ball. Here's Jason Banks again. Kissy gets it from behind. Banks sends it up. Hamilton chests it down. Kissy making a second goal that gets deflected off the captain. Louis Rocco and scooped up there by Hunter Gilstrap. Gilstrap, a very interesting player, played in college with Clemson and the College of Charleston. Started his USL career in 2003 with the PDL's Greenville Lions, and he was goalkeeper of the year in USL 2 last season. And Justin Evans feels he's a guy they can really build around. They signed him to a two-year contract. They want him here at the back, setting the tone defensively. He's done a remarkable job. Well, no question. He's done an excellent job tonight. There's not a thing he can do about the goal other than get his players organized in the right spots before the ball gets in. Made the first save, and the rebound was sitting right there. But it, you know, in reality, it wasn't a difficult positioning for Tuttle to get back into. And I think, you know, perhaps he didn't think the ball was going to get all the way across. Now, here is Tuttle. Pressure put on by Rosalind. He spins away from it. Brings it over to Ben Horner. And Tuttle did well there, and this is what Pittsburgh needs to do is keep the ball moving. You know, it's been so seldom that they've had, you know, more than five passes in a row before giving it up, and then you, you know, you're going to defend a long time against a good team like Rochester, you will give up chances. Matt Tuttle now. Sterling Flunder, who pushed up from left back before Yeisley could get there. Good cost. Former mate with Penn State got there. Tuttle goes down, they play advantage. Parada. Could have gone one more with that. And finally, they do find Horner on the far side in the 27th minute. And Rochester's forwards keep still putting the pressure on, hoping to get a turnover or something that they can turn in. But well, you know, if you look at that, there's a loss of possession without pressure that time. You get a little pressure on, they'll actually be stealing balls in the midfield and getting on good, good counterattacks. You know, Pittsburgh just has to be more patient. As you said, it's only one goal, and you know, there could be nothing worse than giving a ball away in the back now and, and being down 2 nothing all of a sudden. Now, Horner knocks this one long. Cost gets there first for Rochester. Donatelli has to chase this one back on the other side of midfield. Doesn't have a whole lot of options in front. Now, Jimmy, J.C. Banks makes a run. They found pretty decent success with Banks. And they get their first corner kick of the evening. No, they have. In fact, most of Banks' other runs have been on the inside of the defender. That time he's around the outside. An excellent through ball, uh, turning the defender around for Banks getting onto it and earns a corner kick. 21-year-old from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Sends this corner in. Gilstrap leaps up and grabs it, and at six foot three. And built like an Adonis. I mean, you got to see this guy. The only thing really is the mustache. That's really the problem. Actually, if you'll watch tonight, if you'll take a look, that the Riverhounds have all grown mustaches. Uh, it's kind of a team unity thing. I think the, the NHL playoff beard is a little bit better. Uh, not everybody's thrilled with it. 
but uh, some guys it looks pretty good on. I'm not sure I'd want anything extra in the heat that's been going on uh, lately. Well, you got to watch if 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 Andrew Hoxie gets into the match for Rochester, he he was mustache when mustache wasn't cool. I'm not sure it still is, but <laughs> he's had his rocking for the last three weeks at least. And so the Riverhounds a little late to the party, but here they are now in the 29th minute chasing a goal. Back to Nikola Kadic. Sammy Appio hasn't had many touches tonight, and part of the reason is because he can get shoved off the ball like that. He's only five foot six. Yeah, he's, he's actually had some had a, needs a better touch away from the pressure there, then lay the ball off. But you know, him and Ashintaro are both very similar players, and you know, right now they're learning to share the field and share that position. But uh, you know, both of them really do the same thing. They get the ball and they keep it. Shintaro has the ability to get in the attack more if he gets high up. As this game goes on, they may need him to do that. Connor Tobin now to Tyler Bellamy. Now Tyler Rosenland. A couple Tylers and a Connor in the starting lineup. It's like Bob Lilly's coaching like a U11 team. <laughs> All right, out of town scores. A few games tonight. The LA Blues still hanging in there, leading at Richmond 2-0 in the second half. And in the first half, Charlotte leading Wilmington. That's going to go right down to the wire, too. Those two teams, only one of them probably will make the playoffs. And right now, they come in tonight with Charlotte five points behind the Hammerheads. But they could close the gap considerably if they can hold on and win there. They will be in Wilmington in a couple of weeks. Yep. Yeah, obviously, the understatement to say it will be an important game because you look at those standings that you know, show the beginning of the match. And obviously, it's going to come down to the last week for the final spots. And what, uh, what Orlando needed to be able to clinch a playoff spot without playing in league play this weekend, obviously they're facing Newcastle tomorrow night, is for Wilmington to get four points. If Wilmington gets four points in these two matches with Charlotte, then Orlando will clinch a playoff spot without playing. I don't think there's much danger of the Lions not making the exactly. postseason, but Adrian Heath's guys want to be playing well going in their last couple games of the season at home, get that home field advantage. It's oh so important. So you want to keep the home field advantage, but when you do you know, make the first hurdle of getting in, you can also start managing time on players that you know, maybe need some rest or coming off injuries as well. How important that home field is in the playoffs. Bob Lilly coached the only team to win a championship on the road. This league did it with Vancouver, did it here in Rochester. Now he's coaching the Rhinos very successfully. And this crowd here is obviously Happy that it's cooled off a bit because it was over 100 degrees yesterday. It's cooled down considerably. So now it's just a warm night. It's Christmas in July here in Rochester is the promotion tonight. So you will see Santa and his helpers. Yes, you will. Now the, uh, the helper for the referee there uh, waves an offside, but Pittsburgh had the ball, so I'm not sure there was any need to do that. Pittsburgh was in a rhythm moving it around. There you see. Saying his helpers in the crowd. Help, help. It. And before Matt Tuttle can potentially give his side a present, it's cleared away by TJ Gore. Well, in, in, in. This portion of the match brought to you by the W League, the first and longest running national women's soccer league in North America. Learn how you can be a part of the women's game at WLeague.USLSoccer.com. Thrown into the box. Yeisley is there, but it's knocked away. T.J. Gore for Rochester. Louis Rocco almost with a dangerous giveaway there as Kissy was crashing. Because the, the defenders on Pittsburgh are definitely feeling the pressure, and uh, you know that was somewhat routine. I mean, you had to get that ball down clean, but he was feeling the pressure coming on him, and uh, you know gives up a you know almost a bad ball there. Yeah, no question. As you said from the beginning, the forwards for Rochester are trying to put Pittsburgh under pressure, win the ball either there or off the pass, and, and, and go. And when Pittsburgh is able to get the ball near the forwards, either Dayton or Yisley, they look at the shape by Rochester, yep. straight across the back. They've done well defensively to get back. And now it's Kitson who has to reach and grab this one as Dayton was flying in there. 
the wrong side of it. And in reality, that was probably the most dangerous ball that Pittsburgh had uh, tonight. You know, a little bit uh, earlier read by Dayton, and he could get the inside. That ball was dropping low enough that Afar could have got there before the goalkeeper. But you're absolutely right. Uh, it, defensively, Rochester, those four the back line are all right together, despite the fact that the two center backs have not played together uh, as starters this year. Yeah, that cohesion uh, isn't there. A lot of guys have been in and out of Bob Lilly's lineup this year, and still they've, they've learned well. And they've kept a clean sheet here through 33 and a half minutes. As that one will go out for a corner kick for Rochester, their second of the night. And it'll be Banks going over to take it. Here's Banks in the 35th minute, curling that one in, and it's in the net! Connor Tobin got his head on that one and put it past Hunter Gilstrap, and it's 2-0 Rhinos. Watch this, because this is as good a corner kick as you will get. Ball lands, teasing the goalkeeper, and Connor Tobin getting the start in the back. Getting his first goal of the year, though, on the front side. We were just talking about how well they were doing in the back, and he wants to prove he could do it at both ends. But Banks puts in, J.C. Banks, that's his third assist of the year, and he, you put in corner kicks like that, you are going to get assists. And you're going to get more playing time, too. <laughs> yes, you will. It's Tobin with a nose for the goal there. Another situation very dire get for Pittsburgh. Up. It's 2 0 down on the road, not where you want to be. Let's see what these young River Hounds have in them. The ball launched out of the back by Louis Rolko, out of play. They always say the most dangerous lead in soccer. Maybe 2 0, but if you're Rochester, you're happy you have it right yep. now. Especially if you're up 2 0 at home. And your team uh, that you're facing just played on the Wednesday. Traveled up here five and a half hours. Here's Tuttle into the box. Tuttle goes down, and Steve Montanino's not interested. Well, I'll tell you, that that looked close, didn't it? You know, uh, Montanino was right on top of that. And it skips over the head of Sammy Appiah, which is, doesn't have to go too high in the air to do that. Let's take a we look at a, that. Yeah, let's see, let's see what it looks like on the replay. And, uh, you know, Tuttle doing some good moves in there, a little shaking and baking, and gets on the inside and, you know, touched a little bit there. I, you know, when, when, when the defender puts his hand up right away, sometimes it's actually a guilt thing. Here's Hamilton now. Rosenland. Stands and knocks this one into the box. I guess he got a head to it, but it went the wrong direction. T.J. Gore now. Again, you'll see him drift from side to side all over the place. Cheeky little back heel here, and Hamilton tries to turn. Kissy tries to force his way through. It does, and Gilstrap pounces on it at his six. Yeah, right now, Pittsburgh has no answer defensively for the attack coming from Rochester. But to be honest, the only answer they can have is if they can keep the ball longer. You know, and hope some things open up up top. And that hasn't happened yet. I'll be looking at Geisley maybe for the first time going on the ball facing forward. Yeah. He's still on the side of the field. Geisley gets up a little gingerly. Rochester definitely with the bulk of the possession here in the first 37 minutes plus. And they've got the 2 0 lead. Now Rosenland again. Gore comes back inside to Rosenland. Shields Appia. Costanzo now. Last seven minutes and change of this first half will be very telling to see what Pittsburgh's reaction is. Yeah, I mean, they have no choice, obviously, but to keep trying to, you know, play play a little bit better. But these are things, you know, some of these balls are putting them into pressure. They, they, they need to do a little bit more work off the ball to get in better positions so it's a lot easier to keep it moving. 
The last time these two teams met back on June 17th, Rochester won 3-0 behind goals by Andrew Hoxie and Drew Cost and Rich Costanzo. And so this is two, a game and a half now, and Rochester's five goals to the good on Pittsburgh. Hamilton now cannot get to that one. And so it'll be Pittsburgh's ball. Stanzo knocks that one forward. Kadich just relieves the pressure, but just gives the ball back to Rochester. We'll build again out of the back. And Ken, that's exactly what the formula has been tonight. A bad formula for Pittsburgh. They get the ball and give it back to Rochester. Rochester does a lot of good things with the ball. Here's Banks spinning away from Harada. He's got Hamilton as an option in front of him. Gets it to him in the box. Hamilton will serve it back out wide. Donatelli's calling for it on the other side of the box. They do get it over his head. Shield Flunder back out to Gore. Gore now goes to the far post. Banks is there, and Banks suffers friendly fire there at the, at the six. Two men down for Rochester. Banks and Kissy, second time tonight that Kissy's had to be tended to by the athletic training staff. Yeah, they both went into each other challenging for the ball. And you know, that was certainly a, a better one, I think, for Kissy coming on to, and Banks was kind of going away from it. But, uh, you know, we'll have a look at this. And you'll see just what happened. Watch these two both going out the ball. Banks backing up, so not seeing Kissy, and there it is, uh, head to head. And that can't feel good at any time, and certainly not when it's uh, when it's hot out, as, as we've had, too. And good to see uh, Banks getting up, but... Uh, you know, both players up now, and... Hopefully they'll be fine. Justin Evans' club has had to deal with some injuries as well. And getting guys healthy is the key to that, this six game stretch here too. A little change in the system and some health. It's been the recipe for getting them back in the playoff hunt. You know, it absolutely has been. You know, they were playing a fairly strict 4-4-2 and things weren't going well for them. And, you know, they made a change and the, the big change was getting Apia and Chintaro, and Chintaro uh, Harada playing side by side, like two players in front of the back four. You know, then uh, kind of dropped Isley behind when Dayton's in the game, when we'll see Chad Seaver probably go in the game, especially with him being back, and, and Seaver gets up high, but almost playing like a 4-2-3-1 is what they went to. And since that time, it was very stingy defensively, as we've said, but certainly not tonight. And that is their challenge, because at home, Rochester has only given up four goals all year. I saw Evans there talking to fourth official Ashley Cedro. as now we're back to live action in the 42nd minute. We expect a bit of stoppage time here in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk with Rochester head man Bob Lilly about his career. And we'll also have first half highlights and stats. It's all coming up at halftime, just about five or six minutes. Here's J.C. Banks. He survived the collision with his teammate Kissy. Kissy's back in there as well. On a night like tonight, your substitutes bench can be very key. Warm night, obviously, and you're playing against a team that played two nights ago. Oh, absolutely. It's a, a you know, huge challenge for Pittsburgh, both because of being down 2 nothing, playing away, but also because of playing two nights ago. And Rochester showing that they do have depth. Uh, you know, got three uh, key players out tonight, and so three other players starting, and they obviously haven't uh, you know, dropped anything level's very high, you know, and that's why they're in first place. You have to have depth both within a game and throughout the season. Troy Roberts out with a knee injury. Cuevas Kirk has a thigh bump, and Alfonso Montegalvan's ankle will not allow him to go tonight. There's Tyler Rosenland. And if you're Pittsburgh, somebody's coming off at the half. So if, it, if you think it might be you, you've got a few minutes here, you may as well just play all out. Because it, it might be you who gets the, the nod to come off at halftime because there are some people on Pittsburgh bench who can make a difference. Chad Seavers is just one guy we expect to see. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Seavers is not in right away. And 
be surprised as well if we don't see Stefan Lundberg, who's got the pace and everything to maybe make a difference here tonight. Because the one thing, while you know, good players out wide, Tuttle and Gray, uh, not being able to get in behind the Rochester defense. They definitely have to do something. Severs comes in, maybe they go with a two up front, you know, uh, strictly. Uh, even guys who stand behind and one of the midfielders comes out. These two teams are not done with each other. This is the second of three meetings. The Riverhounds will be back here to finish the season on August 13th. Next to last day of the season. Counting a, an Open Cup loss here a year ago, 3-0. This has been a house of horrors as Kissy turns. Maybe he had a little bit more time than he thought he had yes. to maybe settle that one. Instead, tried to get a little bit clever. and Instead, it's way over there, and Hunter Gilstrap has to try to track down a ball. Yeah, it's amazing how the balls don't get into play when the home team is winning, you know, uh, like that so quickly. But actually, I'm not too sure they're not uh, okay with it slowing down a little bit right now and going to the halftime, two nothing down and just regroup. Here's Gilstrap now to send this goal kick. Boy, he can He's drive behind it him. Slip head by Dayton. Oh, Yeisley almost got in. Got a foul. Got a foul though. So here's what Pittsburgh's going to need. If they can't get something out of the run of play, they are going to need free kicks in the offensive third here, which they've got one. We've already seen Gray drill a couple from way farther out than this. Yeah, both Gray and Tuttle hit, hit uh, good balls in. And Gray has, you know, four assists on the year. And, you, you know, some of them have come from serving balls in. And, you know, we'll see what it is. This is a good angle for a ball in uh, just behind the defense. And uh, you can hit a ball like we saw before one of their crosses that, they're almost driven right at the penalty spot in behind. Tuttle and Gray. Stand over this one. We're in first half stoppage time. Headed on and right to Kitson. Geisley did get his head on that, but right to Neil Kitson. And that was a good ball. You know, that, that was the hole that was there. It was all about the timing of a run and, you know, the ball being put into that hole for it. And that was a good chance, you know, as, as good a chance as they've had all night, obviously. Just one minute of stoppage time. Indicated by Ashley Sidro, our fourth official. As Gilstrap races over and grabs this one. Drop, through, Seconds tick down here at Salem Stadium in Rochester, New York on the USL Pro Game of the Week. Ken Tomash and Keith Tabachnik with you on what has turned into a really pretty evening now that the sun has gone down and temperatures are probably in the mid to low 80s. Welcome respite from the very high temperatures uh, everywhere pretty much in the nation this week, but here in Western New York especially where it was over 100 degrees yesterday. Pittsburgh yeah, tried to eat a little, eat a little real estate there and <laughs> yes. that wasn't happening either, even in the dying seconds of the first half of a 2-0 game. Tuttle tried to get to that one, but Gore got there first, now Donatelli Montanino checks his watch and whistles the first half of play to a conclusion. Goals by Isaac Kisi and Connor Tobin are the difference as Rochester is two goals to the good after 45 minutes on the USL Pro Game of the Week from Salem Stadium in Rochester. We'll be back with more. Don't go away. We'll be back with highlights, stats, and a conversation with Rochester headman Bob Lilly after this. Don't go away. This is the USL Pro Game of the Week on Fox Soccer. Transformers are back, and so is the Bacon Cheddar Ranch Tender Crisp at Burger King. Crispy bacon, rich cheddar cheese, and creamy ranch dressing. Not even the end of the world will make you put it down. The Bacon Cheddar Ranch Tender Crisp. Get it before it's gone. See Transformers Dark of the Moon, now in theaters. You could save a bundle with GEICO's multi-policy discount. GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So me and the lads earned a trip to San Francisco twice as fast. We get double miles every time we use our card. I'll take these two, no matter what we're buying. And all of those? 
And since Double Miles had a fast, we can bring the whole gang. It's hard to beat Double Miles. Whoa, dude. Get the Venture Card from Capital One and earn Double Miles on every purchase every day. Go to CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Nature is unique, pure, and also delicious. Like Nature Valley. Granola bars made with crunchy oats and pure honey. Nature Valley. 100% natural, 100% delicious. Nature Valley Sweet and Salty Nut Bars. They're made from whole roasted nuts and dipped in creamy peanut butter. Making your craving for a sweet and salty bar irresistible by Nature Valley. Dempsey with the ball. What's better than watching a game with Modelo Especial? Check this out. Being there. Go to your retailer to learn how to enter to win a soccer trip of a lifetime. Modelo Especial. Exclusive international rivalries are on Fox Soccer. Top BPL teams come to America and take on the MLX. Don't miss any of the action. Tomorrow, only on Fox Soccer. If you missed the Dan Patrick Show, you've missed high-profile athletes, celebrities, and, of course, the Danettes. Yeah! The Dan Patrick Show, weekdays on FSN. Takes it in his path. Oh, that is a moment of brilliance. So this match is authorized by United Soccer Leagues. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of any image, sound, account, or description without the express written permission of USL is strictly prohibited. Tonight's match was produced for USL by Cultural Global Media Incorporated. We are in Rochester on the USL Pro Game of the Week where the Rhinos lead the Pittsburgh Riverhounds 2-0 after 45 minutes of play. Ken Tomash and Keith Kabasnik with you in the USL Pro Game of the Week. Well, the Rhinos are looking to clinch a playoff berth and Coach Bob Lilly's looking for career victory number 200 as an outdoor head coach in regular season, postseason, and open cup play. Before tonight's match, I asked this USL Hall of Famer about milestones and more. The numbers were getting higher, but you, you, when you're coaching, you're trying to get your players to to look one game at a time. And um, I've been blessed. I've been in, in some good environments. I've I've coached some some teams that for strong organizations, and I've had some very good players. So uh, you know, it's it's a nice uh, accomplishment. But hopefully, there's a, a few more wins left in there like to think that I've learned some things over the year, years, feel like I'm still learning and still every year trying to find my team. You know, every year the makeup of the team is a little bit different and you're, you're always trying to get them in a position where they can be successful, uh, make the playoffs and hopefully have a run at playoff time. I hope that, uh, you know, I can coach a few more years and, and continue to help players. Um, you know, I, I still find it enjoyable. Uh, it is a challenge every year. I mean, I think there's the depth of coaches is a lot better now. There's a, a lot more guys, I think, that have a real good concept of what's going on. There's some young guys like when I was 30 that, uh, you know, have a tremendous amount of energy and, and are always uh, discovering new things and pushing different buttons. And, you know, I'm finding it incredibly competitive this year as I have every year just to try to keep your nose ahead of some of the other teams and give yourselves a chance to win. Well, Bob Lilly is 45 minutes away from that 200th win and his team is 5-0 and and leading at halftime. We'll be back with more first half highlights and stats coming up. More to eat on the Fox Soccer USL Pro Game of the Week. The legendary New York Cosmos are back, and to mark the club's rebirth, 
Umbro has applied its celebrated football tailoring ethos to the brand new 2011 collection. Anthem jacket, Cosmos tees, New York Cosmos jersey, 1976-1977 home jersey. For the complete New York Cosmos line, go to soccer.com slash Umbro. Would you like to beat the high cost of auto insurance? Find a lower rate and lower your monthly payments so you have more cash for other things? Just log on to thegeneral.com or call for a super fast quote. Our rates are very affordable, and right now our monthly payments are as low as $39. You'll also get instant proof of insurance. Get a quote right now. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. Also get a free flight. You know that comes with a private island. Really? No, it comes with a hat. You see, airline credit cards promise flights for 25,000 miles, but... There's never any seats for 25,000 miles. Frustrating, isn't it? But that won't happen with the Capital One Venture Card. You can book any airline, anytime. Hey, I just said that. After all, isn't traveling hard enough? Now, to get the flight you want, sign up for a Venture Card at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Uh, it's okay. I've played a pilot before. WES is on Fox Soccer. The Breakers look to stay hot against the Flash. Live Sunday, presented by Puma. The CONCACAF Champions League. MLS teams battle the top clubs from their own backyard. All fighting for their chance to raise the cup as champions. The CONCACAF Champions League on Fox Soccer. This summer, exclusive international rivalries are on Fox Soccer. Chelsea take on the best in Asia. The BPL compete against Hong Kong's first division. Max City and Inter square off in the Dublin Super Cup. Top BPL teams take on the MLS. World's most prestigious clubs are in the Audi Cup. Don't miss any of the action this summer only on Fox Soccer. Major League Soccer takes on the world Saturday night at 7. D.C. United hosts Everton. Then on Sunday, the New York Red Bulls are in London to play Arsenal in the annual Emirates Cup. Both matches are live in HD here on Fox Soccer. Meanwhile, in the USL Pro Game of the Week, we're in Rochester, and at halftime, it's 2-0 Rhinos. Welcome back to Salem Stadium, everyone. I'm Ken Tomash, along with Keith Debesnik. And let's go right to the highlights in the first half, Coach. Yeah, well, the first half was all Rochester, and that's what we're going to see in the highlights here. This clever layoff to Tony Donatelli. It looks like it's going in. A great save by Hunter Gilstrap. Pushes it out, keeping Pittsburgh alive for a while. Now we see a little later. J.C. Banks with the cross. It's flicked on. Donatelli again, first time cross, and that's kissing in for a second goal of the season. one nothing Rochester, and it won't take long. 11 minutes later, it's J.C. Banks on the corner kick. As good as they get, the header by... The center back, Connor Tobin. Connor Tobin, thank you. Connor Tobin for his first of the year. Not usually saying his name in the middle of the goal at that end. And Connor Tobin makes it 2 nothing for Rochester. See the Rhinos out shooting the Riverhounds 7-2 in that first half. Each goalkeeper made a pair of saves. And uh, Hunter Gilstrap adds to his league leading total with that. Rochester with two corners and they scored on one of them. That's a pretty good percentage and a fairly after we saw a little a bumping and running in the in the early stages of the first half kind of settled down it was a fairly clean rest of the way. Well it did and it's absolutely a fair result right now at halftime for Rochester. Big challenge for Pittsburgh. Well the Rhinos as we said are 5-0 and oh in leading at the half. Can the Riverhounds do something about that? Find out next when the second half begins on Fox Soccer. The legendary New York Cosmos are back, and to mark the club's rebirth, Umbro has applied its celebrated football tailoring ethos to the brand new 2011 collection. 
Anthem Jacket, Cosmos Tees, New York Cosmos Jersey, 1976-1977 Home Jersey. For the complete New York Cosmos line, go to Soccer.com slash Umbro. Exclusive Barclays Premier League games, 70 UEFA Champion League matches, and the world's best rugby competitions. Call 1 877 kick or go to foxsoccerplus.com today. If you missed the Dan Patrick Show, you've missed this. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Oh, it is good. Woo! Breaking sports news. Went to Dallas to cover the Super Bowl and the X Games broke out. High profile athletes and celebrities. Charlie Sheen. I love every cell of your perfect body. What's not to love, Dan Patrick? And, of course, the Danettes. Yeah! The Dan Patrick Show. Weekdays on FSN. If you or a loved one used a Vandia, a Vandivit, or a Vandril and suffered a heart attack, stroke, congestive heart failure, or sudden death, you may be eligible for money damages. Call the law firm of Wayne Goss toll-free at 1-800-598-0261. That's 1-800-598-0261. Studies have shown that using a Vandia may lead to a significant increase in the risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one have suffered serious side effects or died after using a Vandia, a Vandivit, or a Vandril, call 1-800-598-0261. That's 1-800-598-0261. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So me and the boys earned a trip to D.C. twice as fast. Oh, hi. We get double miles every time we use our card. And since double miles out of fast, one more chariot, please. We can bring the whole gang. I cannot tell a lie. He did it. Right. It's hard to beat double miles. Read my lips. No new access. Get the Venture Card from Capital One and earn double miles on every purchase every day. Go to CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? So you're a Democrat, right? This broadcast of USL Pro is brought to you by USLsoccer.com. Scores, stats, news, and more exclusively on USLsoccer.com, the official website of United Soccer Leagues. By Umbro, true to soccer since 1924. For more information, visit Umbro.com. By the PDL, the destination league for tomorrow's professional stars. Visit PDL.USLsoccer.com for expansion opportunities. And by the W League, the first and longest running national women's soccer league in North America. Learn how you can be a part of the women's game at WLeague.USLsoccer.com. Coming up next weekend, a double dip of Soccer Night in America. On Friday, the precocious Philadelphia Union hosts defending MLS Cup champion Colorado. And then on Saturday, it's the Vancouver Whitecaps welcoming the Los Angeles Galaxy. Both games are at 7 o'clock Eastern, live in HD here on Fox Soccer. 45 minutes in the books here at Salem Stadium in Rochester, New York. Don't, do not adjust your set or look at your calendar. It is Christmas in July is the promotion here in Rochester tonight. Ken Tomash and... Keith Tabatsnik with you. Glad to be with you. Hi, everybody. This young man. There we go. Can't wait for Christmas to come. And luckily, he hasn't had to wait tonight. And his team is two goals to the good against a Pittsburgh team that is looking for answers. And what do you expect Justin Evans might say in response? Well, he may need to be talking to Santa Claus at halftime because uh, there's not a lot coming out uh, of Pittsburgh tonight. And uh, it does not look like they're making any subs right now, and uh, uh, although there might be somebody, and we'll see when they break up right now. But they, uh, I think Tuttle may have come to the bench. Looks like the same 11 that started for Bob Lilly, including that man who scored the first goal of the match. So, yeah, so for Pittsburgh, yes, Jason uh, Cutney is in, and he's at the right midfield, and 
Uh, it was a, a tunnel that came out, and it looks like Gray has gone over to the left side. So that is the one change. Uh, I would expect to, you know, that you you would see Isley playing a little higher up, but of course that's only going to matter if they're able to start moving the ball around and getting it to them. But uh, be surprised if we don't see, see Chad Sievers in at some point too. And, you know, Ken, it's really a thing. You're down two nothing, and you know you're going to hope you make the playoffs. And you find yourself in this position in the playoffs, you're going to have to have some answers. So here, here's the time to try, try to figure something out. Again, uh, Justin Evans in his first year as a head coach. Uh, he's been an assistant coach with the Riverhounds organization for the last couple of years, but it's a little bit different when you're the man in the the big chair, as it were. And so it's situations like this that can only make you better. Absolutely. I always said assistant coach is the best job and the best job there is. Uh, changes all around when you're the head coach. Here's Shintaro Harada now. Forward to Yeisley with the ball at his feet for one of the rare times tonight. Jason Cutney with his first touch of the ball, lays it back. It's Ben Horner. Kolokevich now. In the midfield, and they really haven't been able to get much out of Sammy Appiah because he's been central. Absolutely. It's been tough for him to, to do anything once he gets the ball. And every time it goes to him, uh, somebody is right on him. And, and he's played every one of his balls has had to play backwards or square, except for one long ball that he tried uh, cross field that was intercepted. And, you know, he, he's a good player doing that, but so is Shintaro. And maybe in a game like this where you're down to nothing, you can't really have both those players in at the same time. We'll see. Sammy Appiah from Ghana, late of the Houston Dynamo. Outstanding career at Boston University for Neil Roberts. He had 10 goals and 11 assists in his career at, at BU. They could use either of those things out of him <laughs> right now. Yeah. Out of somebody. If they get an assist, it means they've got it on the scoreboard right now. They're through 47 minutes. Nothing showing. We'll probably state the obvious. The first 10, 15 minutes is, is a real uh, tester for Pittsburgh. Is that they can, can they rebound from being 2 nothing? Regardless of if they score or not, can they get out and just play a lot better than they did first half? You know, obviously, if you do that, then, then hopefully some chances come from it. And we mentioned that Rochester's only given up four goals all year at home. Most recently by Jamie Watson, who may be watching tonight in Orlando, getting ready to play Newcastle tomorrow night. Playing the Magpies, doing their tour of uh, the U.S. And we were uh, very honored uh, many years ago when they came to Washington, D.C. and we were able to host them at Georgetown with Sir Bobby Robson as the manager back then. A great experience. Here's Sterling Flunder now on the far side for Pittsburgh. Again, they'll switch it here on the near side to Ben Horner. And went past Cutney, but it went out off. All right, huh? Corner now, cheats forward, and that's the second time they've tried that, and Steve Munson is not going to let that happen tonight. Uh, you can get a few yards, but if you get too far. Having said that, it's about the only way that Pittsburgh's been able to get upfield uh, <laughs> this game so far is uh, walking it up on the on the throw ins They had that excellent chance off the restart late in the, in the second half. Of course, they had the corner kick early in the game, and another one uh, about 10 minutes into the game. Hasn't been a whole lot other than the long free kick that tested uh, Kitson from Gray. Uh, told you the Riverhounds unbeaten in their last six, including an impressive win at Charleston, where it's tough to go in and win. This place equally, if not more so. Especially when the Rhinos keep the ball for long stretches, as they have been doing. Tony Donatelli knows exactly what to do with it. So does J.C. Banks. Here's Banks having a go, just puts it over the bar. And Banks was all over the place in the first half, and he's doing the same thing at the beginning of the second half. I mean, he's a you know, technically left midfield, but let's just say J.C. Banks' position is all over the place, and he's doing a good job of it. Uh, his dad, Jimmy Banks, a former U.S. international, has to be quite proud of him. We see Hunter Gilstrap, one of only three USL Pro goalies to play every minute for their team every game this season. Ronnie Pascal of Richmond, the other, and Eric Reed of Charlotte. The other two, you just, he's one of those guys as a coach, you just pencil that in and that's one of the 11 that you never have to worry about. Uh, absolutely, and uh, you certainly hope uh, you don't get an injury as the season goes on and you, you, know, you have a keeper come in who, who's not tested, but I tell you what, by the looks of uh, looks of him, it's gonna take a lot to get him injured. That is a strong, strong player there. Here's Donatelli now. 
He was looking for Banks. Stepping in to win that one was Nikola Kadic, and he's going to venture forward. You see a problem there. The confidence in Pittsburgh on offense just isn't there because as, as Nikola got that ball and goes forward, no one was moving to, to get the ball. It's almost like they're expecting to lose it, don't want to get out of their defensive position. And of course, if you do that, you're never going to be able to keep the ball. Yeisley deflects that one, but it's back to Connor Tobin, who had one of the two first half goals. Nice header off the corner kick from Banks. Well, he did. I, I had trouble coming up with his name at halftime because <laughs> he doesn't get forward too often. It was such a great goal. It looked like a classic uh, forward getting on the end of it. And, uh, you know, he put that away as well as you can. Well, it is Christmas in July, Keith, so <laughs> it's the time of miracles. <laughs> it is. I'm not sure he's going to agree with you on that as a miracle, but... Uh, He'll take it. He will take it Find for sure. in your stocking one morning. Yeah, that is a, that's a highlight goal. Here we're in the 51st minutes, and that goal and the one by Isaac Kissy have the homestanding Rhinos, two goals to the good. Here's Tyler Rosenberg. Cost gives it away. And now a 4A forward by Gray. Pittsburgh. Something doing here. Cutting launches one. Bar post. Kits and outs. He had <laughs> Jeremy Dayton right there on his shoulder again. You know, in many ways, that was the first counterattack that Pittsburgh has had all night. You know, we talk about uh, them having to get some stuff in the attack, and one of the big problems that we haven't mentioned hardly ever tonight, Jason Yisley, who leads Pittsburgh with five goals and two assists. Jeremy Dayton up front ahead of him has four goals on the year also, but these guys have not been able to face goal tonight. A good defensive game plan by Bob Lilly and Bill Sedgwick, Billy Andraki. Stanzo gets forward. Banks, we talked about him playing all over the field. We just saw him over on the right side. Now here he is on the left side touch line. Stanzo, making a run up the near hand side, gets around a defender. Costanza to the byline, slides it in front, but Hamilton puts it behind for a corner. Yeah, it was a nice attack by Costanza, who, who actually came into college uh, as a midfielder, did really well. At, uh, Maryland got put to the outside back, and this is what he did uh, for the Terrapins, and you know, almost creating another goal, but getting a corner kick, and see if Banks can uh, replicate what he did at the end of the, uh, in, in the second half, and certainly Connor Tobin hoping the same. Banks would like to have that one back, I think. Didn't hit it nearly as well as he would have liked. Hamilton, a very speedy player. Making his seventh start of the year. Well, Lily has been fortunate, I guess, in a way, that he had some guys who were unable to play early in the season, and it, and it got a lot of guys some time that they might otherwise not have gotten or they weren't expecting coming into this season. No, you're exactly right. The reason that they're doing well tonight, that they've had it in there. And, and I say the, the big thing that's impressive is, is the fact that the center backs, and that's, you know, the, the backbone of the team, the spine of the team, Tyler Bellamy and Connor Tobin, uh, they, well, they've played together. They haven't started yet. Here's Banks. Something dangerous here. And Gilstrap smothers that one at the six. Well, I'll tell you what, if you think you're watching replays over and over again, that's what it looks like right now. Banks going down the left, uh, you know, just Rochester getting down and getting crosses in. And this is a very good save. Uh, he'll start making himself very big and getting part of the ball. And, but also the big part of that was getting on top of the rebound right away. Now another player down in the midfield, that is Drew Cost. Another one of those guys who Bob Lilly said he told maybe wouldn't play a whole lot in his first year with the Rhinos, but was uh, forced to play some and has played very, very well when he's gotten the opportunity. And here he's shaken up, but looks like to the midsection. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and he has had a good game tonight. And also, you know, talking about the partnerships, him and Tyler Roseland, you know, playing together, uh, you know, that's two critical partnerships uh, in the center of the park. And we have a, a look at uh, what happened to Cost here as he's going in for the ball. and. Uh, something something a little a extra knee. at the end, yeah. It may have been a knee there that went into the midsection. Look at you have to be very pleased, uh, you know, if you're Bob Lilly, that you can have subs come off the bench, start in games as big as this, and do as well as they've been doing. Gilstrap is on that one. Nice little sequence there as Costanzo. Scissored that one out of the air and forward. 
Hamilton was there. And what, what I've noticed too with them in the center of the midfield is that if one goes forward, the other one is, is sitting behind and playing very safe in front of the back four of the Rochester defense. And that's one of those reasons Yisley is, is really withdrawn, which means he's right with that player. And, and I think, I really think Yisley needs to get higher up right now. And, you know, uh, sooner or later, if something doesn't change, uh, you know, I, I would say that they need to take probably a, a Sammy Appiah out and, and get a, a Chad Sievers in another attacker. Well, Jeremy Dayton was fouled there by Tyler Bellamy, and that sets up this free kick chance. And once again, it will be Thomas Gray. Gray, who's been expert at placing these long free kicks in that first half. He just drills this one, and Kitson is forced to make a very difficult save. Oh. Wow, did he hit that. Uh, that. That's as well as you'll hit a ball, because not only was it struck well, it dipped as well, hitting the ground first, making it really hard for the goalkeeper to be able to hold on to it. I mean, have a look at how far that out that is. And Kitson getting on to it. And I tell you, what, there's a little more determination for a rebound. Uh, you know, they might have been able to get to the end of that, you know, for, for a tap in. Thomas Gray from Neptune, New Jersey. Not a very big guy. Just Evans likes the charge that he put into that ball. He would have liked to. Like that if Neil Kitson had just been not quite so Neil Johnny on the spot. Yeah. Well, I wonder if Thomas uh, did that for Monmouth for uh, Robbie McCourt's team. He led the NCAA in assists his junior year, actually, and uh, four assists on the year in the USL right now also. He tracks down this one at the edge of the box and plays it back to Flunder. Flunder, uh, get one forward into the box before they can get anything more dangerous. That one will go out. Okay, a goal kick. Tonight, Steve Montanino, tonight's referees. Good match to this point. Nothing too difficult. You know, Kitson, one of the top keepers in the league. And a YouTube sensation. <laughs> Stoppage time goal in Antigua. That's, that's right. Well, I, I, so one thing I've been impressed about quite a bit in USL and the game we watch is the amount of quality goalkeepers in this league. There's no question there's a ton of them with, with uh, you know, MLS teams have to be looking closely at some of these guys that are actually playing day in and day out versus the guys who's the number three keeper on their roster. Now the Riverhounds on the attack. They've had a couple more chances here in this second half of play. Still a long way to go in a short time to get there as we've almost reached 58 minutes play. There's Kadic. Tapia. Corner now with Banks hounding him. Parada. Tapia again. He will launch one towards Dayton, and they crunch him in a sandwich. But Gray is there. Gray with a shot over the bar. Well, I think someone took the brunt of that. You just think you're walking around in the <laughs> plaza. You got to pay attention gotta, back there. When Gray is shooting. Yeah, because this is rocking. There's Appiah putting the ball in. You know, putting it into the big man up top, Dayton. And, of course, the second ball there is you know, so important. And Gray gets on top of that. But you know, maybe needs to take a little off that to get it on target. Uh, CNN has uh, restarted a little early. We know he can put that ball on target, and it could be the way that they have to get a goal is off something bouncing around. But here are the Rhinos. Rosenlund tries to slot that one through and does to Banks, and only good work by Kadich. Keeps it from being a very dangerous chance. The cost now to Rosenlund. Loose ball on the turf, foul called. Tyler Rosenlund. The captain's armband tonight, making things happen in the midfield as he usually does. As Cost goes down for the second time in the last several minutes, as they make a motion to the bench to get the athletic training staff on for him. Elsewhere tonight, and here is a huge result for Pittsburgh and their fans. Uh, the L.A. Blues go to Richmond and win 2-1, so that gives them 26 points and moves them ahead of Pittsburgh into third place in the National Division. And in the second half, Charlotte leads Wilmington 1-0. We told you about that dogfight going down to the wires. And a women's score from the W League Eastern Conference 
championships. The Atlanta Silverbacks women beat the Charlotte Lady Eagles 1-0. So Atlanta is headed to Seattle for the 2011 W League Championship presented by Umbro next week. There are other games uh, Saturday and Sunday for the other two slots in that final four. Toronto, Ottawa, Quebec City, and Laval will go at it starting tomorrow. And then on Sunday, it's Vancouver and Santa Clarita trying to get a berth in that final four. The Seattle Sounders women will be host for the event. And there's a good chance, Keith, we're going to see some of the participants from the FIFA Women's World Cup on the field in Chicago. Well, I'd say there's a very good chance considering that the more than 60 participants uh, in, the, in the FIFA Women's World Cup have W League experience and of course including uh, the US stars like Abby Wambach, Shannon Box, Heather O'Reilly, Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan and you know this league the the uh, you know the W League is outstanding and certainly the best professional women's league in North America if not the world. Speaking of course of the women's game and Abby Wambach we had a huge crowd here over 15,000 in this very stadium just the other night on Wednesday night to watch Wambach's homecoming. Of course the Grew up here in suburban Rochester, Pittsburgh. And so she had tons of fans here and the women's game definitely on the rise and some exciting announcements coming about the future of the W League as well. So the, the stars that you saw play on the field in Germany and have thrilled to in your communities will have places to play at whatever level from the youth level to the pro-am level to maybe the professional level. Well, certainly the Women's World Cup was uh, was exciting and you know congratulations to Japan but also to the U.S. team. Well Wambach, I mean, Wambach people forget she's played in the W League she played for the Rochester Ravens here in her hometown Shannon Box Heather O'Reilly Carly Lloyd Alex Morgan all with W League experience. Morgan I think is going to be the, the, the next star from a lot of different perspectives. And Drew Cost did not was not able to continue and so in the 61st minute Kenny Versailles is in first substitution made by Bob Lilly and there he is with the ball number 16 in white and Kenny is a very talented player as well very skillful on the ball if you see see the ball get to his feet you're gonna see some nice stuff good touch and can keep the ball going also get into the attack a little bit but uh, again a good player to be able to bring off the bench now Donatelli is going to get a little talking to there. We watch this again and uh, a little high boot there. It was a Versailles with a little touch and then Donatelli making sure the job was done. Again, that's Yisley has been fighting hard tonight to try to get anything going. But you know, one of the big problems, if you think about it, for Pittsburgh, the fact we have not said Yisley's name very often. The leading goal scorer with five and. He's in the box now, and Gray will flick it to him over his head. Harada is there. Kitson with a save ball sitting on the fence. The flag is up, though. Harada is going to go right to the referee, and he cannot believe. I don't know if he can't believe that he missed the chance or that the offside flag came up. Well, we're trying to see the referee's looking over at the assistant referee, and uh, it's, I wonder if they thought maybe it was even over or something there, but uh, Harada is very upset. Oh, he's upset because he got nailed from behind by Tyler Bellamy. Yep. That's yeah, what he's upset that. about. He wants, first he slips and falls on this turf. Kitson with the acrobatic save. Harada's coming in and he gets well, nailed from behind. I'm going to tell you one thing. If the offside flag was up before that, fair enough. But if it wasn't, that's a penalty. No question about it. And uh, uh, Shintaro has every right to be quite upset. Now he's got to keep his cool too because Pittsburgh doesn't want him to do something where they lose him. You know, going down where every game is so important. but. Uh, you know, that was certainly as clear as can be, and I can only say that the, the flag must have gone up before that. Well, Harada still learning English, and I don't know <laughs> how much of, you know what you always learn first in any language. <laughs> yes. I don't know if he used some of what we would call sentence modifiers. Well, I, I know Shintaro fairly well from uh, the days at Crystal Palace, Baltimore, and, uh, you know, he does know the English he needs to know. Here's Rochester now. Oh, they were trying to get it to Kissy. And Kadich was there to break that up. So Pittsburgh, yeah, this game working. still just 2-0 here in the 65th minute. That would have been quite the, the opportunity there if 
Uh, absolutely. And in fact, uh, watch uh, Shintaro is going to actually step up another gear right now. And when he gets upset, he, he actually gets quite good. And, you know, he's going to be all over the place and active. It might be the time if you're going to take Sammy Appy out, this might be the time to do it and let Shintaro take over the midfield. TJ Gore got his head to that one. Here's Harada. And that one got away from him, but I believe he got fouled. And Rosenlund is going to go in Steve Montanino's book. First discipline of the evening. Yeah, and I'd have to say that that, uh, that may come from an effect of uh, Shintaro's, uh, Shintaro's English was just good enough to uh, convince the referee that the next time something had to happen. Because we've seen uh, some worse fouls than that uh, that have just been talked to. Yeah, but, we uh, are, we sorry. are, sorry, we are going to see Chad Sievers come in here. Gilstrap sends this one long. Here's Gray. Up on the right side now. Well, normally when Sievers goes in, it's for uh, Jeremy Dayton, and maybe after playing, uh, you know, the other night and uh, just two nights ago in Pittsburgh, that's exactly what they'll do. And that happens. You might see Yeisley get up higher. I think if uh, they hadn't played Wednesday, you'd probably see all three of them in trying to get the goal back. But I, I can certainly understand if it's a, if, if it's their normal sub. And Chad Seaver certainly knows how to score goals. An outstanding career at uh, Penn State. I think the ninth all-time leading scorer for Penn State. And one goal and two assists this year. He's getting set to come in. And uh, Andrew Hoxie is standing uh, ready for a signal to be sent into the competition for Rochester. Will give us another mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Bellamy. They feel as though he got out of jail. Got away with. Hit on Shintaro Harada from behind a few minutes ago. Well, when you see uh, Andrew Hoxie go in for Rochester, you're going to see the average height of the uh, teams out here go up by a few inches. Uh, six foot four, uh, outstanding forward for the William and Mary Tribe, and only Athletic Association Player of the Year in 2009. He's got three goals and two assists on the year. Here's Harada. Sai. Banks. Banks goes back to Kitson. In the 68th minute, still a 2 nothing score line that we had at halftime. Wonder heads that one. And it will get out of play, and now we'll see. I believe we'll see our two substitutions, and we will. Andrew Hoxie will come in for Isaac Kissy. And Chad Sievers will come on for Jeremy Dayton. Receivers from Ocean City, New Jersey. Dayton, last year's Rookie of the Year in the league. Comes off. And, uh, Kissy, the first goal scorer of the evening. Yeah, absolutely. He, he had an outstanding first half. Uh, you didn't see a whole lot of him uh, in this part of the second half, but uh, he certainly uh, played a, played probably maybe his best half of the year. Got a very deserved goal. And, you know, another goal scorer going in for him. So there's no rest for the Pittsburgh defense when Hoxie goes in. And he should play well off Hamilton. He can hold the ball, keep it, and let Hamilton run off it, and it can be very dangerous here in the last... Check me on this, Julie Foudy. 22 <laughs> minutes <laughs> remaining. I'll go. I'll go with you on that. 22. Ah! Tobin gets his head to that one for Rochester. That does Versailles. And now the temperature's dropped, and it's really a gorgeous evening. It's even prettier when you're a fan of the Rhinos and the team is up 2-0. Absolutely. Uh, looks like Sammy Appia is uh, hurting right now and uh, waving over to the bench. And, you know, again, we said this a couple times, but Pittsburgh just played a, a game on Wednesday night where they had to come from behind to beat Dayton 3-1 to one and spend a lot of energy and then on the bus on Thursday to get up here. So uh, you know, you're going to wonder how much is in the tank right now. Here's Rosenland with a shot that's blocked by Kedich. 
Here's Harada with some open space in the midfield. Option Cutney on the right. Oh, he pushed that one through looking for Gray. Yeah, and Gray kind of ran out of a, you know, a good window for that ball. He's, he's sitting there and, you know, I think that was actually a good decision on the pass and he runs right out of it. Of course, Gray is a more comfortable wide player. Right now, they've seen a lot of interchanging with the uh, Pittsburgh attacking players and Yeisley is indeed up high. Chad Seavers and Gray and Cutney, you know, kind of three midfielders behind them. for side. Come to your corner. JC Banks is wide open on the left hand right, side. Right. Calling for it. So they do find it. He's had a terrific match. Chested into the box but cleared away. Good idea by Hamilton. There was some good ball movement uh, for Rochester coming in and Banks knew exactly where he wanted to put that ball. And Donatelli running right off of the, the chest. Throw in here. Hamilton. Back to Banks. Harada ran right into that one. Banks pays him no mind. Yeah, check that out with Roseland running off that uh, chest before. Tobin and Yisley. 50-50 yeah, struggle there. Rhinos retain possession. Roseland trying to get into the box. And Gilstrap comes out outside his six to grab that one on a bounce. Hey fans, would you like your business to run more efficiently? I can offer solutions can help you. Jay Gore circles back and is content to just knock the ball around a little bit. We see Hunter Gilstrap. We talked about his rise from the PDL to the pro ranks, and you know he's one of those guys. There are many in USL who've gone up the pyramid, and you can do that in USL from. U12 elite youth teams to USL Pro and hopefully to MISL as well. And we're going to see a lot of young talent on display at the Super Y League Finals later on this year in Tampa, December 2nd through the 6th. And we'll be emulating guys like this. Tony Donatelli, who takes a shot, gets a second chance at it, pushes it through. Pretty cleared away by Pittsburgh. More than 130 boys and girls teams and about 2,500 players throughout North America are going to descend on Tampa that first week in December. College, national team, and international club scouts are going to be seeing some outstanding talent on display at the Super Y League North American Finals. Well, it's certainly one of the things that USL works hard on is trying to make it, uh, let's say, college coach friendly, you know, to, to really be something that benefits the college coaches, both on the recruiting side and, of course, with PDL, you know, and these players playing during the summer, something that, you know, for many years there just wasn't anything of quality other than some local leagues in the summertime. Cut me with an almost chance there at the other end for Pittsburgh, but snuffed out again. And Connor Tobin did well there because you know, Tobin's had a, a night to remember. He, he's done well on both ends. I mean, he obviously had the goal, you know, going in the corner kick, but he has done extremely well defensively as battle with Yisley, first with Dayton in the first half. And Yisley, I mean, you look at those guys that don't, you know, other than the header right at the end of the half, they have not had a shot on goal. Tough to come by. Tough to come in here. And get anything done. This is notoriously a tough place for opposing teams to get points. And the Riverhounds, in fact, have been the team that has struggled to get points on the road. We told you just one win away from home for Louis Rocco and the Riverhounds this season. Still in the thick of the playoff hunt. LA winning tonight made things a little bit more difficult. Here's another one sent goalward, and Banks was crashing, but he keeps it in. Banks now. Gilstrap draws a beat on it and grabs it. Watch this along for Yisley. Yisley still alive, and oh, they're going to call Yisley for the foul, and he can't mm. believe it. I'll tell you what, uh, you almost have to say they're both going at it the whole way yeah. down. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, I mean, unless there was something a little different. They, look at them going. They're both going at it. I'm sorry. I don't think that's a foul. No, I think you you're right. I don't In think fact, that's a foul. He gets, yep. It came after the whistle, I think, that. And yeah. Yisley is, uh, we talked about Gilstrap being a big guy. Yisley's a, a big guy as well. Let the physical guys play. So Matt Fondy's going to come in now. 
for Ben Horner, 75th. Now, Fondi's a player that he is an attacking player. He's gone in, you know, for Horner, who was playing outside back, but uh, Fondi also, you know, a wide midfielder uh, naturally, and, you know, somebody that can get in and get a little more attacking going, hopefully, for Pittsburgh. I have to say, Pittsburgh's, you know, done obviously much better second half than first half. They dodged one or two bullets, so, you know, excellent save you know, earlier by Gilstrap, but. You know, this game could be a one-goal game right now. It's very close to it. And certainly, I think a penalty kick you know, should have happened in their favor. And, you know, had uh, Pittsburgh been able to take care of that, then it's a one-goal game going down to the end, and you never know what happens. 15 minutes remaining right now. Fondi uh, in from UC Santa Cruz. The banana slugs, aren't they? <laughs> are the banana slugs? You know what? Uh, I will say that I'll agree with you if you think they are. All right. Well, Johans Marshall is going to come in for Anthony Hamilton. So Bob Lilly actually takes out a forward. Some much applause. Puts in Johans Marshall, a defender. They signed him in June. Hasn't seen. A lot of playing time, but well, we had some time uh, prior with LA Galaxy. And another uh, another excellent college player in the Big East for South Florida. Come on, Rosie. So we'll see what happens here as Cutney sends that one to the top of the box. Arada chases after it, but Tony Donatelli gets there, and he seems to be as as fresh as he was in minute one, making things happen. Of course. It's obviously easier when you haven't played two nights before and you're at home. Donatelli, a very good player. Oh, here's a chance in the box after a miscue at the back. He set up Hoxie, but Gilstrap is right there as the two mustaches nearly collide. <laughs> I don't know what happens in that regard. That now here's Fondi racing forward, the recent substitute. Oh, he had a good idea to try to push that around Marshall, but get to it uh, so you're coming off the bench right now you know you have to try to make your team better and make something happen if you're a wide player that's one of the things that they're probably looking for you to do try to go at the defense and you know, create something one-on-one -on -one and get a cross in or draw defenders out there's hoxie now on the far side touch line and he'll get dragged down by sterling flunder and that'll be a free kick and it's going to be a yellow card as well and that was a deserving yellow card and it shows one of the strengths of Hoxie. You know, we're talking about a guy that can hold things off, and, and he just rolled off of uh, the defender. You watch this again. It really just playing with him there and got the defender to follow his back. And you know that's a you know that's a real uh, dangerous thing in a defender when you get so tight that he turns on you. You know Hoxie is not an easy guy to stay with when he gets a half foot step on you. Sterling Flunder from Tacoma, Washington. Free kick now, about 18 yards off the goal line, but at an extreme angle. Looks like Donatelli's going to take this one himself. He's got Hawks as one big target. Marshall in there as well. And it out, and it went off the referee as well. J.C. Banks sidesteps a defender, sends a worm burner that never got to Hunter Gilstrap, and it was cleared away. Defense has been a key to Pittsburgh's success, not just last year when they were a league semifinalist, but this year as well, came in uh, really on that six game streak without a loss, playing very well defensively. No, that is what turned it around because you know, you're doing well defensively when you get the ball, you're in good offense position as well. And so, you know, everything's gonna go well, uh, you know, when the defense is just clicking. Nice work by Tuttle. Did well to send that one out wide and put in by Cutney and it's behind for a corner and we are going to see another substitution but first take a look at this nice work here again a perfectly laid off ball there it's another dangerous cross and it really uh, puts, the, puts the defender he, I don't know what he thought his teammate was going to do for that but uh, that was all on him putting that ball out of bounds for the corner and Shintaro taking this corner now as you see Stefan Lundberg Another local guy from Duquesne University comes in for Pittsburgh, and somebody threw a roll of bathroom tissue right as Shintaro Harada was getting set to take that corner kick, and he alertly pulled out of the of the kick. Now he'll do it again. Harada's corner. 
in the 80th minute, headed towards the goal. Kitson leaps up and barely keeps that ball out of the goal. Yeah, Chad Seavers uh, trying trying to uh, help him into the goal with the ball, but Kitson with the, the short hands. Shots now 10-6 favoring the Rhinos tonight. So the Riverhounds have had four shots here in the second half, and See the corner kick here going over a deep corner uh, headed back. Uh, one problem you have to look at with Pittsburgh is only Chad Seavers challenging for that ball coming back across. And, and you're down 2 nothing. You got to send everybody in and take chances on that. Kitson just six foot one, and he needed every inch of it there. 81st minute. Pittsburgh's still alive, but they've got to get something done here. Meanwhile, over in the American Division, the latest word is that Wilmington still trails at Charlotte 1 0 with under 10 minutes to play. So the Eagles may be making a, a late run. That one's going to go down to the wire. That'll go down, and, and really it's a, you know, a three horse race here in this division with Rochester, Harrisburg, City Islanders, and, and now LA with the, with the win tonight. Boy, Harrisburg has been terrific of late, haven't they? I mean, Welker has just been on fire, scoring goals. And they may be, uh, they may make things very interesting. This, uh, if this result holds tonight, obviously Rochester puts a little bit more space. They came in with just that one point lead in the national division. This would push it to four. You know, what, regardless of what happens with uh, with Harrisburg, you know, if they catch Rochester, Rochester or not, they're finishing the season on a really good note, and that momentum that you take into the playoffs is so big. Here's Yisley building some momentum. Still alive in the box. Still Yisley. Draws a crowd. He just looks like a guy just determined to make something happen. Sammy Appiah. Fondy now at the edge of the box. Going 1v1. Versailles cleared that one away. And now it's Tobin. Nice build up, but it was good. That was a little too much uh, solo for. He was trying to find something, combo. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, kind of couldn't find, was hoping to get a shot off. And uh, credit to the Rochester defenders for being patient as well, not diving in on him. And, you know, then uh, kind of a lazy cross that gets gets uh, cleared out easily. You saw TJ Gore there, one of the guys deputized tonight to play it back with uh, Troy Roberts and Cuevas Kirk out. Kirk would normally be at that right back position, but TJ Gore has held down the fort very well tonight. He's done well, the University of Vermont graduate. Tyler Bellamy has been lucky. I mean, he's good, but he's also <laughs> been fortunate that uh, A, he hasn't been booked yet tonight for a couple of his challenges, and that he didn't uh, give up a penalty to Parada. Oh, header yeah. that Kitson had all the way. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, he, he could have got booked earlier in the game, and then had that been called the penalty, you know, it certainly would have been the second booking. Game of inches. Neil Kitson. It's back to Nikola Katic. Katic, a big fan of the Rocky movies, and Rocky was a guy who could take some punches and stand in there until the very last round and see if his... Riverhound mates have a fighter's chance tonight here with just seven minutes and change to go. Parada leaves this one for Yisley. Appia. Now good ball movement by Pittsburgh, but is it too little too late? Appia. Justin Evans has made four substitutions. He had a little bit of a thin bench tonight, so there may not be reinforcements coming. Fondi went down at the edge of the box, and we play on. Donatelli to Banks. Gore finds Rosenland in the 84th minute. Parada hits him from behind. Maybe something on here, Jason Cutney. Appia. Balletic move there, and Appia swings it far post. Headed on. In front, and another save by Neil Kitson. Matt Fondy with the outside of his boot. Thought he might have made it 2 1. Yeah, and this uh, cross from Appia gets in behind the defense, and here's Jaisi doing the smart thing right back across, and there's Fondy almost getting it, forcing Kitson into another save, and another excellent chance. I mean, they've had their chances to, to, to get the goals, and 
you know, if there's any positive to come out of it coming up here, they haven't always got those chances. So just one of them goes in, there's still time, five and a half minutes left, you get a goal and you know, it's a downhill field for five minutes. Well, stay with us because this one is far from over as the Riverhounds keep the pressure on and a giveaway here. Cut me at the edge of the box. Yeisley goes to the side. Oh, and he's just, oh, that's Fondy rather. They look very similar hairstyles. Yeah, again, watch this cross, a, a cross that really just got over the keeper and he's almost sneaking in at the back post. Fondy getting there and trying to find something to do. It's probably a ball you have to knock back. It's gonna be a very difficult one to put in as it's almost out of bounds. So we'll see uh, Bob Lilly here for uh, things hold for the next four and a half minutes. It'll be Bob Lilly's 200th win and uh, congratulations to him should this hold. And USL Hall of Famer and well-deserved. A good player in his own right. I had the opportunity to play one year with him. And club ball in Washington and had a tremendous coaching career as well. And wish him the best of luck as the rest of the season goes. And if this holds, congratulations, Bob, on 200. With more to come, he's only 45 years old. Already a USL Hall of Famer. And said he hopes to stay here in Rochester and make great things happen. Of course, he had success in Hershey for five years. They, he was coach of the year in his inaugural season. Went to the final in 2001 where he lost to the Rhinos. Won a title in Vancouver. Had success in Montreal. Even coached indoors a little bit where he was uh, a player for many years, an indoor player. And his team now just about four minutes and change away from Notching three more points and their 10th victory of the season. They've never had fewer than 11 wins in a full season since the inception of the franchise. Now the River Hounds. Geisley looking to pounce. Third away by Tobin, who's there again. Parada. Everybody pushing forward. Ten guys near the box. It's Fondy drives one in. Geisley tries to turn. Tobin will not let him. Fondy again. Gets around Costanzo. Loose ball in the box. It's bouncing around like bumper pool in there. There's a lot of players in there. You got to get that cross in behind that whole group. Uh, otherwise, it's a more of a kick and a hope that it does bounce somewhere. But a lot of pressure right now. Offsides on that cross. And, uh, you know, might be a little too little too late on the pressure, but certainly Pittsburgh not giving up at all. We'll see Will Trainer come on now. Trainer doesn't get a lot of playing time. This will just be his ninth appearance of the season. He's going to come on for Tony Donatelli, who should get a nice hand. Donatelli had an excellent game, and Trainer going in. He was a Conference USA first team player from South Carolina, played for Mark Burson. And Excellent college career, taking it into the pros now. Donatelli coming off. Very impressive night for Donatelli. Well, trainers in as brother Jack may be watching down in Orlando. Jack, who played at Notre Dame for Bobby Clark. So each team's made four of their allotted five substitutions. I don't think we will see anybody else get into this match. Hunter Gilstrap will get a goal kick, but the Fans long way to go about from where he's placed the ball, about 114 yards to the other goal. And Neil Kitson is the man in the way, along with 10 other guys in white shirts. Play, go forward! Josie, run forward! We've reached the 89th minute. Another minute left and probably a few minutes of added time. Pittsburgh with a deep throw in their own end. There is one minute remaining in the half. Rolko now. Sent to the far side. Pittsburgh find anything before the three whistles. It was Lundberg almost playing a through ball. He had a couple good runs, Isley going through and Seavers, and just cut off by the Rochester defense that they've been doing most of the night. 
Launched by Kanich, grabbed by Kitson. Stanzo comes up with this loose ball. Rosenland now for Rochester. Marshall. Here's Rosenland. Why is lonesome? Kadich will close him down. Try to force that one through. Oh, and Rosalind goes down in a soft penalty. And a wow. yellow card as well. I'm telling you, that is going to be a hard one to take for, uh, for Pittsburgh after not getting the penalty on the other end. Let's have a look at this. Rosalind making the move and defender uh, getting in the front of it. Unlucky that the ball comes back. It certainly was a foul as well. And it's going to be hard to take just because they didn't get it at the other end, not because it wasn't a good call. I think uh, it's harsh, though. Yeah. You know, you just, you know, you get in the 90th minute in extra time, but uh, you know, it's still a foul. And, uh, you'd rather, uh, rather he didn't have to call it, I'm sure. Well, Justin Evans has had better days at the dentist. Andrew Hoxie. And Hoxie adds insult to injury time with a penalty kick. And he does, and he had to kick that as well as he did because uh, that goal was uh, covered quite well. You know, Gilstrap almost gets his hand to it, and the ball uh, nicks the inside of the post and, and goes in, and Hoxie does what he does best, scores goals his fourth of the year. We'll have another look at it, and just, just look how close this was to being saved. And, Almost gets a finger on it and needed every bit of the goal as he could get to put that ball in. As far as he's concerned, it was perfectly placed. Mm -hmm. Now Marshall, loose ball, and Kitson keeps it out of the goal again. Even when it looks like for certain that that ball's going in the net, it just simply will not go in for Pittsburgh. No, and Kitson has uh, done that uh, several times tonight, and. You know, not just tonight, but all season. Uh, one of the top keepers, uh, two of the top keepers in the league that we're watching tonight. And I just have to say that uh, while I'm not sure three nothing is fair based on the second half, uh, it's certainly a deserved win for Rochester all around. Maybe more. Rosenland. He set up the most recent one. But of course, you know, had the penalty been called on the other end earlier, then everything changes. You know, the everything. whole momentum and the you know the whole part of the game and the outlook changes and both teams have to do things a lot different. It's football, as they say. Mm -hmm. It's not in this drawers, obviously. <laughs> Final 30 seconds or so of stoppage time, although only Steve Montanino knows for certain. Does that goal may add a little bit more time? We'll see. Cut me. Geisley got his head to that one. Fondy could get there. Marshall did for Rochester. So with the win, Rochester will improve to 9, 6, and 3. And there was nothing after the 3. And that is it. Win number 200 in the illustrious career of Bob Lilly. And it is a comprehensive win. 3-0 over a very game Pittsburgh Riverhound squad. And now Justin Evans is letting Steve Montanino hear about it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Justin can be uh, upset about that, but you can't think about just one play. Uh, Rochester will deserve this game tonight, period. Well, we hope you enjoyed the USL Pro Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer. In two weeks, we'll be in Wilmington as the Hammerheads face the L.A. Blues. For Keith Tabatznik and our entire Fox Soccer crew, this is Ken Tomash saying good night from Rochester, where the Rhinos beat the Pittsburgh Riverhounds by a final count of 3-0. Good night from Western New York. This program is brought to you by Soccer.com, the largest selection of soccer gear for players, fans, and teams.